Hey guys, it's Mr. Kennedy back with another video, and this one's going to be on animal development. Now, when we talk about animal development, we have to start off with the process of fertilization. Now, until the 18th century, humans actually believed that there were tiny infants inside of sperm and egg, which we know is not true nowadays. Uh, we understand that the sperm has half the information genetically, and the egg has the other half, and when they unite, they create a diploid organism. Now, if we go through the entire process of fertilization, we start out with what's called the acrosomal reaction, which is basically when the sperm hits the egg, there's a hydrolytic enzyme in the sperm's tip that is very specific to each species, and it's able to eat through the, the jelly coat of the egg, and it binds to a certain receptor, a protein receptor on the egg, and the egg and the sperm have a lock and a key mechanism one, they fit perfectly with one another. Now, just as soon as the sperm actually impregnates the egg, then you have what's called a fast block of polyspermy, which is the membrane depolarizes. And when it does, it makes it where other sperm can't impregnate the same egg. So you, you basically have a mechanism that prevents multiple sperms fertilizing the same egg. Um, next, you have what's called the cortical, cortical uh, reaction, which is release of calcium, and it hardens the eggshell, and this creates kind of a slow um, polyspermy reaction. And eventually what will happen is that the egg will start to develop, protein synthesis will start to occur, and all of the receptors that were once there to bind to the sperm will disappear, will be lost. Now... Whenever we have the egg, we understand that it goes through a process of mitosis and it will split from one cell into two cells, from two to four, etc. Well, when you split that first cell from one to two, that's called cleavage. And when we talk about cleavage, oftentimes the egg splits and the yolk, which is the nutrient part of the egg, ends up on one end more so than the other. The end that has most of the yolk is called the vegetable. Uh, pole and the one that has less is called the animal pole and eventually as the eggs multiply we'll create what's called a blastula. A blastula is a hollow ball of cells and this hollow ball of cells is actually going to invert so let me show you what I mean by that. If you have that a hollow ball of cells like this eventually what's going to happen you can get pressure on one side and it's going to invert like that kind of make an inward C which is going to create three layers. Here's one layer, here's a layer, and then the inside is going to be a layer. And those three layers are the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. The ectoderm being the outside layer, which is eventually going to develop into your nervous system, your skin, etc., into, into organism. The mesoderm is the middle layer, and it's going to eventually develop into your skeleton and into your muscle and excretory systems. And then your endoderm, which is the inside layer, is going to develop into your digestive system and other organs that are associated with it and with your respiratory system. So it kind of makes sense to where they're located. Now, the process of it folding is called invagination. This is when the gastrointestinal buckles to create that um, architeron, which is the primitive gut. And we've spoken about this before. This gut has an opening, and it's called the blastophore. And if this blastophore develops into the anus, then you are called a deuterostome, which is what we are. Or if this opening develops, this blastophore develops into the mouth, then you are called a protostome, which we are not. Um, so that kind of links back to what we had talked about a long time ago in another chapter. Now, whenever we talk about next, we talk about organogenesis, which is the formation of organs. Now, when we talk gastrolization, we talk about mass movement of cells. Organogenesis is when you have this concentrated, finite movement of cells to develop, such as the neural tube. The neural tube is the beginning of our spinal column. Um, you have somites develop, which are vertebrae or skeletal muscles starting to develop along that neural tube. You have a neural crest where bones and the muscles of the skull start to develop. So all of these slowly start to happen, and they're coming from the layers that were created by gastrolization, the endosperm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. Now, the last thing I want to mention is there's a thing called programmed cell death, or apoptosis, which 
happens for many reasons. A good example is for the tadpole here. As this tadpole starts to go into metamorphosis, it doesn't need the tail anymore. So those cells will actually go through programmed cell death and, and they'll die. That's called apoptosis. Now, it also happens inside of us. When we're first starting to develop in our gastrulization form, and we're starting to develop our nervous system, then we have a lot of neurons, more so than what we really need. Well, eventually, if a neuron is not associated with another neuron, it will go through apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, and it'd be eliminated. Um, so that's just another way our body uh, controls the cells. All right, I hope this, guys, I hope this has helped you a little bit, and I will talk to you soon.